I would like to welcome you to um, tell us what you've prepared for our stewardship sermon this year called The Next Chapter. Thank you, Rebecca. And isn't that a thing about now that everything's in video and in images that all of our hairstyles are immortalized forever? <laughs> oh, my. Have you ever heard of the fresh start effect? Research in psychological science suggests that if that we may be more likely to actually follow through with our goals if we start on a Monday rather than a Thursday. People tend to attribute negative traits and failures to their past selves while maintaining a positive um, image of their current selves. Dates that stand out as being more meaningful, such as the start of a new week or a new financial quarter or a birthday or a holiday, signal the start of a new distinct time period. These temporal landmarks make it easier for people to mentally separate from their past imperfections and failures, or even just their previous story. Essentially, people are more empowered and motivated to pursue their goals when they feel like their past failures are behind them, or their old story is behind them, and their future is ahead of them. And it's a phenomenon that researchers have dubbed the fresh start effect. It's why January 1st is so popular as a day to begin a new habit or start learning a skill or to quit something that no longer serves you. Add to that the synchronicity of millions of people around the world doing the same thing, like making resolutions or choosing themes for the year. And there's this wave of momentum that sweeps us along. If so many people are inspired by a particular day or a particular event, it must be meaningful, right? When you combine a temporal landmark like New Year's Day, look, it's even in the name, New Year's Day, with the momentum gathered by a group of enthusiastic people, you get a serious boost to whatever it is that you're trying to do. This lines up with why traditions are so powerful. We may not recognize the boost that a tradition gets from occurring on a special date, but those special dates can also be fresh starts. And the abundance of people participating adds even more momentum. Think about how if you've been having a challenging year, you might find a special date helpful for a fresh start. Some of my most powerful transitions, which have become traditions, have coincided with a special date. My grandmother and mother, for instance, both loved Easter. The spring flowers and the colorful eggs, the gift baskets with the crinkly paper grass, and the showy white fragrant lilies that were forced into bloom for the occasion, the transformational Christian resurrection story. And for my grandmother, the excuse to buy a fantastic new hat. All of these added up to both a metaphorical and a practical fresh start. When my grandma died, Easter lost its magic. And when my mom was gone too, it lost its joy completely. I created baskets of goodies for the kids, that was still important, but Easter had begun to sting instead of to sparkle. Instead of a fresh start, I was reminded of what I had lost, the two strongest and most influential women that I had ever known at that point in my life. Women who had risen again and again after facing all kinds of adversity. Now, at some point I realized that hating Easter wasn't doing me any good. And it certainly wasn't honoring their memory. And I needed a way to turn it around. Easter needed a fresh start. I tend to sort my thoughts out through conversation with people or by writing them out longhand. Do you do that? Talk it through or write it out? I've even added stomping it out to my repertoire recently where I hitch up the dog and take her and my problem and stomp around the neighborhood until either my mental stalemate breaks or I just tire myself out enough to surrender. 
So Easter. I can't handle the lilies, they make me sneeze. And writing letters to my mom or my grandma, which someone suggested, well, that just made me sad. But then it hit me. My mom was a champion letter writer. She used to sit, it was her morning ritual to sit at the kitchen table, watch the birds out the window and write letters to people. And so many people have told me how much that meant to them. She had a real gift for saying just the right thing on just the right day. I'm sure I've told you this story before. Well, when I imagined how to honor my memories of these strong, resilient women, I decided that I would write a letter every Easter to a woman who inspires me. Not famous people, although that would be okay, but regular everyday people who have meant something important to me. I would write to someone new every Easter and tell them about the impact they had on my life. This would celebrate my mom's letter writing gift, as well as lift up women who were still alive, who would be surprised by this card that they received in the mail a few days after Easter. It doesn't make me miss my mom or my grandma any less, but it restored Easter as a celebration. It took the sting out of it. Easter got a do-over, a fresh start of its own, and someone got a joyful surprise. The Fresh Start studies identified temporal landmarks like Monday or the first, like the first day of the month or the first day of summer, landmarks that we share with the wider population as important. But it also recognized more creative temporal landmarks, like you could choose your, wedding's day, your wedding day or your mom's birthday or the anniversary of the day you retired. Those landmarks are more personal, more specific to you or a small group close to you. I've been going on and on. You've heard me about the leaf ritual this year, how Lori and I read a post about writing our autumn intentions on fallen leaves and we hung them on our indoor tree. And at the end of autumn, we celebrated the ones that we had completed and carried out by crumpling the leaves and giving them back to the ground. And we released the others by burning them and letting them go. It was transformational for us. It really brought us together into a collaborative space. But more importantly, while it helped us focus our efforts, it also helped us to be a little gentler with ourselves to really practice letting some things go. Not all of our ideas and our goals and our hopes and dreams come to fruition every time we imagine them. And that's okay. I realized as I was writing this service that I've been going on and on about it because I want the momentum to spread. I want others, you, to know how helpful and transformative it was for us in case it might be helpful for you. Something so simple that meant so much. It combined the fresh start, new intentions with a temporal landmark, first day of a new season, first day of spring, with the momentum of companionship, doing it together. And it was so meaningful that we did it again with paper snowflakes with our winter intentions. Some of the original autumn ideas reappeared because they were good and just hadn't had their time yet. And some were truly let go with that wisp of smoke replaced by something new. We read our snowflakes every Tuesday out loud to one another to keep them present. Now, if others picked up the practice, it would have the added momentum of a community effort. People could encourage one another, like, how's it going with your snowflakes? What are you gonna write out for spring? We haven't figured that out, but I'm guessing we might make little paper flowers and hang them from the tree with our spring intentions. There is power and momentum and wisdom. Some would say magic in a shared pursuit. Caring about something in common with other people can reinforce the effort and make it a shared commitment. 
I know when I'm working on fitness goals, I can sometimes let myself down. But when I'm working with a group, even though our goals can be completely different, we feel a commitment to one another and we want to support the group. And that can keep us, give, keep us going even when we might have given up on our own. The group reminds us of who we are at our absolute best, a structure that can strengthen our courage and our resolve and our commitment. One last thing I wanna say before we turn the metaphorical corner here is that I am a huge fan of small, unfailable goals. I've seen people commit to 10,000 steps a day when they weren't even walking at all to begin with, and you know how that's gonna turn out, right? We disappoint ourselves with our inability to sustain effort if we could even manage it in the first place. And we quit rather than facing that feeling of failure over and over again. I encourage new walkers to set a goal of 10 steps, not 10,000, just 10. Because it seems utterly ridiculous for the average bear to not be able to pull off 10 steps, right? And once you've put your shoes on and done 10 steps, well, it seems pretty silly not to do a few more but you only have to do 10 for the win to check that box. Everything else is a bonus. Momentum builds when we believe in ourselves, in our abilities and in our commitments and in our community support. Fresh starts come from making a decision, aligning it with our beliefs and our values and tying it to something that helps us remember why we're doing it anyway. Mondays happen every seven days. If you want to track your progress on those steps or laps or pages, remembering that it only takes 10 for the win, then starting on a Monday means you only have to wait seven days for a reminder. Setting intentions each season means you have three months to give it a good effort and only three months before you have a chance to reassess and refresh with a new set. And if three months is too long, you can pick a day to read them aloud. Tuesday is our shared day off, the day where we focus on connection and commitment. The leaf and now the snowflake rituals have deepened both of these qualities for us. And if we can get our movement going, there's no telling what momentum might occur. That's the power of intentionality and shared effort and ritual. Now, where am I going with this? What does this have to do with our stewardship theme, which is the next chapter. Stewardship, while people think it's a fancy word for the annual financial campaign, has a deeper, more profound meaning. Stewardship is the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. It might mean the financial pledge you make to an organization, but that's only part of it. It also means the care you take when making decisions and the ways you govern or share power or transfer responsibility and the sense of responsibility you have not only for an organization, but for those who came before you and built it and for those who will follow and reimagine it once again. Stewardship is the very act of caring, not just for ourselves or for one another or even for the organization, but for the whole the whole of Westwood, the whole of Unitarian Universalism, the whole of life on the planet, the whole of the interdependent web of all existence. We plant trees whose shade we will never rest beneath because we believe in a future that we will not see, but a future that still matters to us, to generations who follow, to a world that so desperately needs community and caring and safer spaces to make meaning together. We make environmental choices that will exceed our own expiry dates because we know that the planet has a future that is greater than our own individual legacies. And none of us want our legacy to be the destruction of someone else's future. Stewardship is the act of writing the next chapter of the story, 
not the first chapter, you're not beginning from scratch here. And not the last chapter, you have more story to tell. But the next chapter, dreaming a dream together and bringing the resources to bear to make it so. I hear you, I see you, and I understand that it feels overwhelming to imagine next year's Westwood after so many years of a particular continuity. That my leaving means things will change and the ship is feeling a bit adrift right now. And Alara's leaving means that things will change and it feels like one of your essential lifeboats is floating away. And it can be hard when you don't know exactly where the horizon is and how to steer. And if you're the officers on board, your job might feel foreign and daunting. And if you're a retired officer, it might feel a bit dangerous to make eye contact these days. But it doesn't have to be. This is just the initial wave. It rocked the boat, but you are not sinking. It's a wave, not an iceberg. Some of you have been through this before, a change in leadership, a change in ministry, a change in staff. Westwood knows how to do this. There are systems for you to lean into, both within the congregational DNA and also from our national organization. This is exactly why we are members of a national organization. It's exactly why we invest in our relationships with our closest neighbor, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, just across the river, and with our broader region, congregations from across Alberta, all the way to Thunder Bay, Ontario. We are part of the Western region and the Canadian Unitarian Council so that we have allies on our journey, both to share ideas and efforts with, but also to catch and support one another when one of us needs a hand. Stewardship requires money. Of course it does. We pay the power bill and the Zoom subscription, as well as the staff and our national dues. It means that you can hire help to get you through when the waves are more than the volunteers can bail. And that you can share your gifts, like all the wonderful services you make available on the website as recordings to people who can't make it on a Sunday or who need a lift on Thursday night or on a Monday morning when they're heading for their fresh start. And I would be remiss if I didn't encourage you to give whatever you are able to make it meaningful, especially in this tender season when it's still being imagined what intentions you will write as a community to hang on your commitment tree. There is a tendency in times of transition to hide out, to wait and see what happens, to see which way the ship points before we decide how to contribute. But truthfully, if you think about it for a moment, if you wait to see what happens, nothing will happen. If you wait to see where the ship is headed to decide which position to fill within the crew, the shift may drift without direction. And without direction will not inspire you or anyone's confidence. I am not the captain. I never was. It just feels that way sometimes because I am the voice of your decisions. But I am not the decider. I have power in the system, but I am not the power in the system. You are collectively. What this ship needs today is able crew folk. And I don't mean able in the can we climb the mast kind of able. I mean able in the able to work together to cast and fulfill a vision kind of able. Church leadership is not a life sentence. It can be evergreen, 
in that you can continue on endlessly in ways that fulfill you and that feel good for you, but it is not a trap. In fact, Expecting the same people to do the exact same jobs and to always rescue the crew when the waves and the passengers when the waves ride up is precarious. Power and effort need to rotate throughout the ship. Let your elders be the voice of reason. Voices of reassurance. Voices of calm. Trust them. They've been here before. They have wisdom to share and will appreciate being heard. And they have done their heavy lifting. For decades, let them say no when they choose to, to piloting the ship. Ask them to help you navigate and plot your voyage forward based both upon what you feel able and ready to do, but also on your heartfelt community aspirations in the world. This is a community of love and compassion and connection and joy. Feel that, feed that, and share that with the world. This is a community that understands what it means to be people of purpose. Feed that, share that. How you do it may look different for a while or for forever. Your route may feel familiar or foreign or be a unique Westwood mashup of the two. It's going to be okay. Some of you are sad, and that makes sense. I'm sad. And you will help one another through until you can find ways to honor your memories and your traditions, new ways that feel good, respecting the past while also allowing a fresh future. Some of you are already excited. You heard Maggie talking in her stewardship moment and seeing possibility on the horizon. That's good, that's important. Don't ever feel shy about that. It's not a betrayal to be excited about turning the ship. Change can be a good opportunity. These people, the ones who are popping up with ideas, who are excited, think of them as your tugboats. When you chart your course, they can keep nudging you in the right direction help you out of your stuck spots, and even pull you for a while until you're ready to move under your own power or until a friendly wind comes along and catches your sails. Tugboats can be a little pushy sometimes, but you need them. Literally, we all need a push every now and then. Stewardship is the act of recognizing that if Westwood is a ship, you are on it. And no matter who is in charge, you are all riding the same wave. Working together with whatever skills and commitments and courage you can bring to bear, you will get the best result. Waiting for the waves to pass and the horizon to come into sight might mean waiting for a very long time. Work together, chart or row or push or tug together to bring everyone along to harbor. And in harbor, you can plot your next adventure without worrying so much about the immediate waves. Dream a big dream, not an impossible dream, not something that will hurt you, but dream a compelling dream of connection and commitment and love because you matter to the world. The world needs Westwood as much as you do as much as we all do. Westwood is a bright spot within the interdependent web of all existence. Faith is recognizing the invisible sparkling lines that connect us all, wherever we may be, near or far. Vision is trusting the potential of your future, the fresh course you can chart together. 
and intention is the gift that you can give to the vision, whatever you are able to the best of your ability. May the coming church be a new beginning. Coming church year be your new beginning. A temporal landmark that offers a fresh start, rich with tradition and fed by your unique creative spirits. May this spirit stewardship season bring the strengthening of your commitments, your reimagining, your rearranging, and your renewal. May you choose to steer if you are able, to row if you are feeling strong, and to inspire and encourage if that is your gift for this moment. There is momentum in pulling together. There is room for everyone. There is purpose for everyone. May there be grace and kindness as you continue the journey. I will always love you. Blessed be.